Okay gang, now that we've just gone through those applets with what a confidence level means, we're gonna try out two multiple choice questions that deal with confidence levels. And then we're gonna do one multiple choice question with some number crunching. So as I read this, again, I'm gonna try and really identify what land am I in um, and what clues are giving me that, that information. So when we find a 95% confidence interval for the proportion of a population, we know that, and then there's all of these options. So the first thing I note as I'm reading this, in addition to the confidence level, is that I'm in proportion land. Okay, so I'm gonna write off on the margins that I am in proportion land, which means I'm gonna use a Z star critical value. Now, I wasn't given any information about um, if this is one sample or two samples, and it doesn't totally matter um, because I'm just gonna do a theoretical question. So here we go. It says, when we find a 99% confidence interval for the proportion of a population, actually, now that I think about it, that's singular. It doesn't say the difference in proportion, so I am in one sample, okay? But that's a little aside, so here we go. When we find a 99% confidence interval for the proportion of a population, we know that there is a 99% chance that the sample proportion is in the interval we find. Well, so there's a whole bunch wrong with that sentence. The first thing is right here. Your sample proportion is always in your interval. That's how you construct your interval. So if I go back to that original formula, right, there's my sample proportion. It's always in my interval. It's in the middle of my interval because we take our sample proportion, we add a margin of error to it to get an upper bound. We subtract a margin of error from it to get a lower bound, but always dead set in the middle is your statistic, your point estimate. So that sentence, just based on the fact that it says sample proportion is wrong. But the other thing is right here, this 99% chance. All right, the 99% is not referring to what's happening in your one individual interval. It's referring to what's happening if you were to take repeated samples and construct repeated intervals. All right, so there is a 99% chance that the population proportion is in the interval. Well, now they've changed it at least to population proportion. That's better, but this is still off. There's not a 99% chance the parameter is in there. Again, as we discussed before, it's binary. You either got a good interval or a bad interval. It's 0% or 100%. The 99% level refers to, again, if we took sample after sample after sample and constructed interval after interval after interval, about 99% of all of those intervals, right? Law of large numbers with all of those intervals would contain the parameter. So this is off as well. All right. 99% of the time we find such a confidence interval, the sample proportion is in the interval. So again, I'm having problems with this. This is great, 99% of the time we do this, um, that uh, something is in the interval, that's great, but it's not the sample proportion, you can see it's right here. So 99% of the time we find such a confidence interval, right? So 99% of the time we construct intervals based on this method, the parameter is in the interval. All right, so D is our answer. This is referring to in repeated samples, right? If we did this time and time again, 99% of our intervals contain the parameter. That's an interpretation or a different wording for the confidence level. All right, so with that, let's take a look at example 19. Let's see if we can spot the correct answer here. All right, so the 99.7% confidence interval for the mean length of frog jumps is 12.64 centimeters to 14.44 centimeters. Which of the following statements is a correct interpretation of the level? All right, so we're looking for a level, not the interval. The interval would say we are 99.7% confident that mu, the true average um, frog jump length is between 12.64 centimeters and 14.44 centimeters. That would be the, the interval interpretation. Um, all that aside, before I get going, I just wanna point out, I saw the word mean. All right, I also saw some units here. That was another way I could figure out that we were in mean land, and these numbers are larger than one, right? Every proportion is a number between zero and one. So I'm in mean land. I'm gonna be making a T-star confidence interval, and this is gonna be one sample. All right, but let, let's see what we can get, um, which one of these we can narrow this down to. So of the total number of frogs in your area of the country, 99.7% can jump between 12.44, uh, excuse me, 12.64 centimeters and 14.44. None of this is correct. 
we're not talking about how far they can jump individually, right? Out of the total number of frogs, we're talking about where the average frog jump, frog jump, I can't say this, frog jump length is. So there's not even a mention of the word average, right? So I'm just gonna write this there. There's no mention No mention of mean frog jump length. That's not it. All right. Here, there's a 99.7% chance. That always kind of just is a red flag. I'm like, I don't know. Uh, there's a 99.7% chance that the mean length of frog jumps falls between 12.64 centimeters and 14.44 centimeters. So I'm liking all of this, right? This looks great, but it's the chance that's incorrect. Again, it's either zero or one, right? I either, or I should say 0% or 100%. I either got a good interval or I didn't. This 99.7% does not refer to my individual interval. So this is not the correct sentence, okay? All right. So then let's keep on going with this, see what we can find here. So if we were to repeat this sampling many times, all right, so that's looking good already. That's a level, right? If we were to do this many times, 99.7% of the confidence intervals we could construct would contain the true population mean. There it is, right? If we repeated this experiment and constructed interval after interval after interval, 99.7% of them would capture the parameter. Let's just see what this this last one says. So 99.7% of the confidence intervals we con could construct after repeated sampling would go from 12.64 to 14.44. So I like that they talk about repeated sampling, but not every confidence interval is gonna be exactly between 12.64 and 14.44. I mean, you can imagine if you took a different random sample of frogs, you get a, a different upper bound and lower bound most likely. All right, there's some variability there on that sampling distribution. All right. So with that, C is our answer to this one. So those are, again, two multiple choice questions that are really focused on interpreting the level of your confidence interval. All right, so let's take a look at example 20, and that'll round out this chapter. Okay, so this is a random sample of adults found that the average, I'm gonna see that as a buzzword, right? Because I always wanna figure out am I a mean land or my proportion land, that the average calorie consumption was 2,100 per day. Previous research has found that the standard deviation of 450 calories, oh, excuse me, previous research has found a standard deviation of 450 calories, and you can use this value for S. Okay, a researcher has been given $10,000 to conduct a similar survey, which costs $50 per person. She must compute a 95% confidence interval. Given her budget restriction, what would be the minimum margin of error for the confidence interval of the population mean? All right, there's a lot of information in there. Let's see if we can pick this apart. The first thing I'm noticing is the word mean, right? I also see something about calories, right? And so if we're talking about units of calories, I again know I'm in mean land. Looking at this word of 450, or not this word, the standard deviation, excuse me, of 450, that is a number that is larger than one. So I know I'm in mean land. I also see something about 2,100 per day. Um, I see a random sample of 85 adults, so I'm going to just start putting this together. All right, for buzzwords, I see you can use that value for S. I see 95% confidence. I see margin of error. Okay, so there's a whole bunch in here. Oh, and I also see that she's got 10 grand to run her experiment. Okay, so let's see. Let's see what we can do here. So I know I'm in mean land. All right, now because it's talking about a margin of error problem, I'm actually gonna use a Z star. So if, if you're used to saying, oh, this will be T star, I agree, but this is a margin of error problem. Um, so because it's margin of error, we'll use a Z star value. All right, and it says, given her budget restriction, what would the minimum margin of error be for the confidence interval? So if we remember the formula for margin of error, I'm just going to put it here. Our margin of error is always Z star times S over square root of N. And they're not asking for sample size, right? These are not N values. This is everything that comes after the plus or minus in a confidence interval. 
So we can start to, to pick this apart. So if I'm going 95%, I know this is gonna be 1.96. They told me S was 450. And then I just need to know what N is, right? Now, admittedly, in this first random sample, they took 85 adults, but they're, they're redoing this, right? It says, a researcher has been given $10,000 to conduct a similar survey. So this is all new now, right? So from this part of the question on, it's new, right? We're gonna use this previous, um, well, we're gonna use the previous standard deviation number, but we're gonna rerun this. So if she's got $10,000 and she's gonna pay folks $50 per survey, Let's see how many people she can, she can have in her survey. So if I had $10,000, all right, and I could do $50 a person, all right, I'm gonna do the, divide this out by $50 for every one person. And this might be a little bit too much. You might be thinking, well, why don't you just divide it by 50? I'm going to, but I wanna show the units. This would be like saying you have $10,000 times one person in ratio to $50, right? Because when you divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. You can see that the units are gonna cancel out and I'm gonna have person left as my, my um, units. I should say the dollar units are going to cancel out and the only units left are persons. So this is gonna tell you how many folks she can include in this survey. So if we do 10,000 and we divide it by 50, she can actually include 200 people in her survey. Okay, so let's plug that in. I know now the sample size. All right, so N is equal to 200 people. And let's see what kind of margin of error she's gonna come up with as we crunch this. So we've got here 1.96 times 450 divided by the square root of 200. So her margin of error is gonna be about 62.37. The units on this are gonna be calories because that's the units for our variable. So this is gonna be, oh, if I look, they're going one decimal place. So 62.4 calories. And the reason the plus or minus is there is because that's how we always construct our interval, right? X bar, our point estimate, plus or minus our margin of error. T star times S over square root N, or in this case, we use the Z star value, which is fine, but that is our margin of error. So the answer to this one is, if we're looking at A. Whew, all right, gang. Well, that, that rounds out chapter eight. We're gonna head into chapter nine next, which means we're gonna be looking at a whole bunch of hypothesis tests. All right, thanks so much. I'll see ya, bye.